Hi there. Um, this is our poster that we made about um, the overview of the Australian home front in World War One. Yes. So um, conscription and how with Mr. Hughes um, losing for the conscription. Um, also the impact of war, <coughs> which was um, where women uh, particularly were affected and they had to join the workforce in Australia. Um, why we joined the war was because of allies and, um, yep, yeah, and parliamentary um, and getting our nation underway. And also for women, was a big, for women it was a big um, chance in uh, Australian history to do something and uh, create packages for the men away at war. So yeah, that's our overview. <laughs> Take one, action. Conscription, a pressing issue for Australia during the years of World War One. One strong political power, PM Hughes, was thoroughly for the issue, while however, Archbishop Mannix was thoroughly against. The idea of conscription is recruiting people against their will to join the Australian Army. However, as mentioned before, two strong, thoroughly powerful political powers were against each other. It was so tense and tight, we actually had to course our first referendum. Referendum is basically a huge ballot where everybody in the country votes for or against the current issue. Hi, I'm talking about conscription in Australia. There were two referendums for conscription by Mr Hughes. The first one was no by a long way. And the second one was also no. Hughes was fired because of this. Uh, Archbishop Mannix was very against the conscription and as an Irish Catholic, all the Irish and Catholics followed him and the English followed Mr Hughes. So Mr Hughes lost and there was no conscription. Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about why Australia joined the war. Well, there were a few main reasons, and one of them was because when British declared war on behalf of the British Empire, um, Australia was part of the British Empire, so that included Australia. Also, Australia was a very young country, and they wanted to prove themselves. Hi, I'm Angus. There, was, there were huge debates which took place in Australia during World War I about conscription. Archbishop Mannix, one of the leading voices against the introduction of conscription in World War I, said, Australia has done a full share in this war, but loyalty to the Empire has been lauded to the skies. This shows that Australia did not need conscription. They were already portrayed as brave, loyal soldiers to the Empire. Mr Hughes, President of Australia at the current time, completely disagreed with Mannix and was trying to play the guilt card in Australia by saying, Britain is calling up more men, New Zealand is calling up more men, Canada, Canada is calling up more men, upon us the same burden. We too must make the same sacrifice. He's telling Australia that we're lacking in numbers because we don't have conscription and that other countries are calling up men or we can't because of lack of volunteers. On the 21st of September 1916, Mr Hughes said, for September of this year, 32,500 men are required, and for each subsequent month, 16,500 men to maintain our five divisions in the field. By early 1917, never more than 5,000 volunteers offered themselves to service, and this dropped to 2,500 in the second half of the next year. It was good that Australia had both Mannix and Hughes because it gave them the idea of both sides of the argument, not just one, which is basically an extremely tough choice for them when they might not have chosen that, if they knew the consequences and extremities of their decision. Hey, today I'm talking about women at war in World War I at the Australian home front. It was hard for women in World War I because they had to sacrifice their loved ones, sacrificing their sons, husbands and fathers, and many other loved ones. Another point that caused a hard life for women is because they don't have the men to earn their money. Therefore, women have to work hard to feed themselves. One of the largest issues that arose is that women were paid 54% less than, male, than the male wage, causing a really hard life. A way women, in the home front, a way women could contribute to the war effort was to become nurses. 2,500 
2,500 women served in the Australian Medical Service and provided medical help to wounded and incapacitated soldiers. In the home front, women who, want to, who wanted to help the war efforts started the Australian Women's Service Corps, or the AS, AWSC. The aim was to train women to take up roles not traditionally undertaken by women, but they were politely, politely ignored by the government. Women's rights and organisations was were rose to fight for their rights. One of the organisations is called the Women's Auxiliary Array Corps, but sadly their rights were ignored.